Hey everyone, welcome. Pumped for this conversation about infinite possibilities and so much more. We have Kevin Martin joining us on the show. Hi, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Atlas. It's a pleasure being here. This is a very critical topic, one that is very deeply resonant with our true nature, the inexhaustible well of infinite possibilities is our true nature. And as we take on these beautiful sparks of the infinite that the possibility space for us is infinite and to know that we can pursue any of these lower trajectories or our highest excitement towards our North Star, towards our calling and perpetually checking in. Is that what's happening right now? Is that what I'm pursuing? Is that what I'm aligned to? It's critical. Yeah. And uh, it seems uh, that uh, the lower quote unquote possibilities are one of uh, exclusion and uh, the higher possibilities are possibilities of uh, inclusion in which uh, we experience more and more of the oneness of mm -hmm. our true nature. So it's really beautiful to realize uh, that the more uh, we become uh, undistorted, the more uh, we practice uh, with devotion, the more uh, as a very product of this uh, practice and intention, we're gonna experience less distortions in the way in which we are choosing what to experience next. I love that tennis ball hit you just sent over because we don't typically think of these lower possibilities as excluding oneness or not resonating as much with the true nature of reality. One could even see these lower trajectories as having more of a noisy mind. And these higher trajectories are more for those that know how to quiet the mind. And this can be in a sense abiding more and more as the I am. And this can be doing that and aligning yourself with your transcendent noble aim, divine North Star calling, and also communing more and more with what is the source of even the I am. Yeah, so I remember that uh, last time we had uh, a conversation and what came out from that conversation is uh, something that I was dealing with because uh, from one side, I've always been very devoted to the path of self-realization and the other side, I feel like it's really relevant in this life to to achieve and to create, manifest the vision. Yes. And during the conversation, you pointed to the fact that in the way in which I was sharing, there was an eagerness to come out from the stillness in order to go toward the manifestation. Beautiful. And that eagerness is a way in which uh, we want to be separated from that pure awareness in which the vision, in which uh, the calling is already included. We don't need really to go toward it. You are pulled, uh, you generate it from uh, the state of inclusivity in which the calling, uh, the manifestation, the vision is already here. 
So would it be fair to say something then that as you quiet the mind, the noisy mind more and more, and you remove the possibility space of trajectories of the lower ones, which also include a lot of suffering, a lot of anxiety, depression, malevolence, you're trying to seek peace and happiness externally in Maya, rather than recognize as you abide more and more as the I am, you recognize the very nature of being or awareness is, as has been said for millennia, sat chit ananda, existence, consciousness, bliss. So you stop extracting peace and happiness from creation, but rather you recognize your true nature is peace and happiness. So this trajectory already has a lot less malevolence and suffering and anxiety and depression which is fantastic which is what everybody is seeking everybody's seeking peace and happiness and love and wisdom and prosperity unity alignment and actualization and so that's this next one we could say that uh, abiding as the i am automatically as kevin was saying produces the highest calling is that what you were saying Exactly. And uh, this also has been, uh, and still is, uh, the paradox of my life. Because, uh, there are, yeah, there are more. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, uh, abiding in stillness, but who's going to go to the grocery store? <laughs> How do I get the food if I abide in stillness? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you basically carry the stillness with you to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And uh, it seems uh, that there is this blueprint that uh, can get activated more and more, can express itself more and more as we dissolve more and more into this i am the blueprint gets activated perfect blueprint activation with dissolving into i am yeah because the zero point is not really the end there is a still a purpose it is still an exploration that wants to take place on its own 100%. without the mind trying to control things. It will happen. So the eagerness will end up being a spontaneous arising from stillness of highest excitement to go to the grocery store. Yes. And plus, there is also an higher intelligence there when you will go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. There will be something guiding you, coming through you, that is going to inform in subtle ways the different things that you will engage with in the world. Yes. So if you go to the grocery store from a place of a lack or a need or a layer of conditioning, you might not be as guided by the one intelligence, you might be more guided by a layer of conditioning that's trying to fulfill a distortion. So you might not be subtle enough to notice when you get pulled to some high fructose corn syrup in the grocery store, or you might not be, you know, subtle enough to recognize that when the soul a meeting of the souls, a potential meeting of the souls is taking place that you're not subtle enough to detect that the one intelligence is trying to guide you toward that to be a radiant, lucid bliss and peace for someone else that is interested in it, but doesn't yet know it in manifested form. And so you're acting as guidance 
but if you're not subtle enough, you might not see that. Mm -hmm. You need to basically be abiding in the I am perpetually. And in doing so, you perpetually abide in the stillness and the emptiness coming from pure love light rather than conditioning. And as you do so, you begin to also see the oneness omnipresent as the background undercurrent of all that is happening and surrender to that divine intelligence unfolding and your calling manifesting from that most purely. Yes. There is a, a powerful uh, gift that uh, each one of us uh, is here uh, to give uh, to the collective. And uh, abiding in the AM is what allows us to become more and more aware, aware of the different synchronicities that will guide us into the direction of discovering more and more of our mission, more and more of our calling. As an example, uh, for you, Atlas, your calling, if I remember right, is uh, people experiencing uh, truth. I'm sure that there, are, uh, there were different things uh, that led you here. And now, you are uh, showing up daily and you're keeping this as a, your North Star. And there are uh, different uh, things uh, that you're organizing in your life in order to be in alignment with this uh, intention. And this is how you're being of service to the collective and you're sharing uh, your gift, allowing people to remember more and more of their calling, more and more of their uh, original essence. Yes, so if I'm getting this right, when we talk about coming from source, like what we were playing with when we were talking about Bentinho and Anurag's Mirror Talks episode, where they specifically dove into depth on the subject, purifying where you're coming from to make it so that you're coming from source. That is analogous to us coming from I am. Mm. Yeah. So that's already a pretty profound idea is that coming from source is pretty much the same thing as coming from God. Coming from I am. So the only distortions really are the layers of conditioning of all these lack beliefs and all these needs to be validated and seen. Mm. Yeah. So, and uh, there are so many distorted paths that we could take in this moment. How beautiful it is uh, that in this moment, we have the free will to take a distorted path. How beautiful it is that you have the freedom to explore infinite degrees of distortions. Jeez. <laughs> and learn from this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's that's typically what happens when you get one of those little thought clouds that arises in the mind and if you're not really sensitive and trained you don't see it as something that arises and passes so that's basically a trajectory possibility 
that's showing up saying, hey, what about this in the potential of infinite possibilities? And the more sensitive you become, the more you recognize that that trajectory that just arose as a thought cloud in the mind is not in the I am, it's not in the highest excitement. And so that's a trajectory that arose in past. And that is one of those infinite trajectories of distortions that Kevin was just mentioning. Cause yeah. I'm thinking about so many, like even right now, like, could you, either one of us could just step away from the zoom call and like go walk over to go on a walk or something you know but since we know the other person as the i am then why would we do that to ourselves and i could take this camera right now and i could start beating it with a hammer <laughs> All right like uh there's so many of these trajectories. Um, yeah. Yeah, there is so much freedom in that. And the knowing that actually it doesn't, it's not relevant. Exactly. Maybe for you to explore a certain possibility, but it's much more relevant to explore uh, other possibilities. And the only reason why you are here in this density I don't want to get so much into that, but especially if you are a, a wanderer, you decided to come here to explore this possibility of being a, a human, of feeling uh, dense emotions, of getting uh, into conflicts, of having experience of certain uh, relationships, certain hardships. Yeah, that's a really important point for people to remember is that you came here, you made a choice to come here. You came here as part of the exploration of the inexhaustible creativity of source. And for you to know that you've taken on a divine transcendent calling of unlocking the frozen free will of the third density of the collective and unleashing that towards the more vapor-like love light lila that is actually happening is much more exciting than becoming a slave to the carrots of maya mm. Mm. and uh, what it seems is that uh, these are uh higher trajectories, these higher possibilities. They, have, uh, they are more dense with love light yes. because each one of these possibilities is you. <laughs> exactly. And in the less distorted possibility, we are simply aligning ourselves so that now we have an experience that is less distorted. It is more, much more as it is. And as you have experience of this as it is, there is a, a unique reflection that you're gonna experience. You're gonna live from and as your calling. I really adore your focus on the infinite possibilities. I think you do a really good job at honing in on that. And we've only started the episode on it. It's really good. It's really important. You, from the very point, if you go back like a tunnel in your own perception, and you go back like a tunnel, and you become aware of awareness, and then you keep going back to even the very source of awareness itself. So you see the source of awareness and the source of realities. And so 
if you become really aware of the fact that when you go all the way back to nothingness, that what manifests is an exhaustible creativity and that the nature of that is infinite possibility, like Kevin mm -hmm. and I are discussing first. Mm -hmm. And then from there, recognize that you've decided to come here for this exploration and that now your nature here as this mind body spirit complex is to again recognize that your nature is infinite possibility and from here now see the trajectory space just like as above with source inexhaustible creativity so below with your life inexhaustible creativity so recognize that you have an infinite amount of trajectories with your mind body spirit complex right now but what did you come here for did you come here for a rolex did you come here to for one night stands on tinder did you come here to shepherd or steward the planetary awakening and decipher that for yourself as soon as possible. It's already naturally unfolding, but reflect on it. So I've been really appreciating how you focused your, you are on this and how good of a communicator you are about this, Kevin. I'm, it's only the beginning of the podcast convo and I'm so jacked for the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> it is great to be here with you. Yeah, really. <laughs> yes. How did, how did that as above, so below resonate with you? The as above with sources, infinite, inexhaustible creative possibilities, as well as the so below with the mind, body, spirit complexes, infinite possibilities. Yeah. So this is interesting because uh, it's something that I was exploring the last day in my experience in my exploration of the world actually, and just uh, looking at these uh, body minds, looking uh, at what we created uh, right now. And uh, prior to this realization, I was saying that uh, for me, synchronicities were uh, when something uh, would happen in your reality, like that was really precise and you attracted that experience or that 11-11 uh, as a, timing on your phone. But uh, what I'm realizing and what you can realize is right now just by looking at everything that we're creating uh, is that everything uh, is synchronized uh, with source. All aspects of the simulation are synchronized uh, with source. Yes. Even uh, the creation that we are creating right now, as an example, uh, the internet, through the internet, we can be connected. We can download files from the cloud. And you, as a channel for source, you as source, you can channel all the elements of your calling in the body, mind, spirit complex. So everything is synchronized. And my guess is that uh, the more the densities of the planet will increase, the more uh, certain people will become uh, channels to, for new creations yes. that will allow us to experience more of these uh, infinite possibilities. Yeah, here's another way to synchronize our last two points is that the nature of the inexhaustible creativity of source is greater than the nature of the infinite possibilities of our mind body spirit complex here now. Yeah. Because the mind body spirit complex here right now 
is stuck in a specific civilization <laughs> with a specific plane and orbiting a star yeah. with a split with a specific history and a specific future trajectory landscape and with you are trapped to your neurobiology right now the specific design of a cell and the specific way that it functions so <clears throat> because when you really jump to the inexhaustible creativity of source you'll recognize that there's an endless possibility of mind body spirit complexes vehicles neurobiology to design planets stars civilizations it's endless and so right now you're in one of those. Your nature is the source of infinite possibility. So the more you identify as that, the better. So you have to negate and go all the way back to that first for you to know yourself truly. And then you can include awareness and then you can include your unique spark of the infinite, your costume. But if you only identify as your spark of the infinite, as your costume, and you don't know you're actually the source of infinite possibilities, then you'll accidentally create suffering and malevolence mm. because you won't know your true nature. Mm. So, okay, so after you've done this process of negation followed by inclusion, after you've done that process, then you recognize that one of the main things that we'll be focusing on is the infinite possibilities that are present here for the civilization for each mind body spirit complex must be maximized in terms of will choice self-awareness sovereignty and callings and so that's the coolest thing that you can do yeah so one of the concepts that I really like from uh, the low one is uh, the accumulation of uh, spiritual mass. Exactly. And we could even say that uh, the infinite possibilities are all part of the spiritual mass. So in your uh, work of self-realization is that you're bringing all of these possibilities and you're uh, collapsing them more and 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 more. And all of this time, space, time, space, love, light, love, light, love is coming all in one, 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 aware of itself. And from here, you don't even care but there will be a uniqueness that will be projecting to the world. And seems uh, that by abiding in this, you won't really care. <laughs> it seems so. Because <laughs> you'll be all of it and none of it. Yeah. <laughs> I liked uh, what you shared about, because what can happen is that then we find our purpose in this life. We find our vision, we find our calling, but then what happens is that uh, there is still uh, the human attached to it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And that's actually the distortion because it's the human with the vision, which uh, is what will actually be projected all the time in this simulation. That's right. But the question is, uh, do you want to be identified with it? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to be the hero or do you want to be nobody? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's such a good way to put it. The vision being attached to the human rather than the vision being from the source of inexhaustible possibility. So as you create spiritual mass for yourself by 
unfreezing your will and choice and becoming more focused on purely serving others as a steward shepherd for the planetary enlightenment, you'll notice that the coolest thing that you can do is unfreeze the will and choice for those that are still in the third density matrix. And as you do that, you'll have the choice. Is it going to be the, I am the light bringer Atlas that is bringing the vision forward? Or is it going to be, I am source? I am nobody. This is hollow bamboo. <laughs> And so one of them is going to get inextricably attached to the carrots of Maya, and the other one has no chance of getting attached to the carrots of Maya. Yeah, and uh, that, I really think that uh, it will uh, inevitably happen. Because uh, what's coming to mind is that uh, if we are here in the first place, exploring the third density, is because we're attached to something to begin with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would not be in this simulation. Mm -hmm. We are all kids here. <laughs> That's why we are here. <laughs> <laughs> the martial arts belts why would you be here if you hadn't learned if you had already learned how to master the martial arts belts moving between these densities you wouldn't be here yeah. You're, per you're here because you're in school. Yeah. Even uh, if you identify yourself uh, as a wanderer, as a, a soul that is here to be of service to humanity, the only reason why you still want uh, to be of service to humanity in these active ways is because uh, there is a part of you that seems uh, that is re resonating uh, with their calling of suffering. And mm -hmm. the only reason why you can hear it is because you're not fully into source. So you're still attached to something. That's why we're here. We are in the bubble. Mm. So because the soul has yet to fully unite with source it is attached to the narrative of planet earth's suffering and incarnates here for school to affiliate itself more with source and less with attachment to planet suffering yeah because if we then see the old cosmology and we see uh, what happens to the higher self uh, that is uh, in the late sixth density. It starts to get pulled uh, into the gateway, timeless gateway to source that is, uh, if I'm not wrong, the seven density. And here you don't really have a, a choice. You don't have free will anymore to go back. Your free will has been dissolved completely. That uh, distortion, of free will that is still a distortion because you still have the power to choose distortions. The power to choose distortion, the free will is a distortion. The being of seven density is not even a being anymore. Mm -hmm. He has, he, she has no source. He has no will to be of service to a simulation like this. <laughs> And if you really are here to be of service 
to humanity and bringing uh, these codes, these vibrations from your native uh, density. At the same time here, with all of us, you have the possibility to refine uh, your own distortions because uh, here is like being inside of the water. Here, everything is dense. So you're gonna feel the things. So if you can feel the things, it's more easy to work on them. And more, uh, more feeling equals more easy lessons learned. When you feel less, when it hits you less, it's not as great of a catalyst. So the very fact that we can feel makes it easier for the lesson to happen. So we're in the most dense, one of the most dense feeling places here. Yeah. We are in one of the most dense simulations out there. Mm -hmm. From what I can tell so far, you're one of the most aware and awake to the law of one, not only in the No Limit Society, but just in general that I've met, which is awesome. I, you know, the first time that the law one was, was introduced to me, I didn't want to read it <laughs> because I thought uh, that all channeling materials were to be avoided. That's what one of my previous teachers said. He's a public teacher, so maybe I can share it. Uh, David Hawkins that created the scale of consciousness. I had no idea that David Hawkins said, don't trust channeled material. I had no idea. He's yeah. very profoundly influential. So the fact that he would say that would be so weird. Yeah, because, uh, and that's interesting also, right? It's really fascinating to see the fact that you can still have a high level of realization, but still you're here, still you have to learn. So this is what David Hawking is saying in, in his teachings, in his books, to avoid uh, the astral realm and to avoid uh, channeling materials. But, and I agree with it. I agree with it. Because the law one, it's unique. It's a, a real, clear uh, transmission. So we could say that it's even right to say that because uh, the law one, from what I experienced, we can say maybe, I didn't explore all of them, but we can say that is one of the least distorted, maybe channeling materials out there. I don't know all of them, but uh, I know that a lot of people that I really resonate with, they share the same view. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, because there is a, there has been a, a real a accurate preparation for this transmission to take place. And when you go to read, you can really feel that Ra is she is coming from source. <laughs> yes. That's probably why there's such a strong gravitation towards the law of one material by Bentinho, team, you, the, me. Because of that, because it feels quite selflessly, purely brought forth. Yeah, and to say the truth, I, I, it's safe to assume that actually I learned, I became aware of the law one, 80% through Bentino, 20% through the material. 
because uh, Bentino actually point, is pointing us into learning uh, the law one from the essence. Yes. Because uh, he often say, says that uh, this book uh, is not about the tarot cards, it's not about the UFO. Yeah, all of these things are cool, but uh, look at what Ra is pointing to. Yeah. Yeah, he's pointing to the direct path. He, she's pointing to the direct path. <laughs> and it's and not only the direct path for the individuated mind body spirit complex to mm -hmm. know to know their infinite possibility space and to see everything as catalyst to remove distortions towards love light lila but it's also a metaphysical map in terms of the true nature of a seven density ascent with a cyclic cosmological creation yeah because what is said in the law one is that this third density, it's often said, it's often repeated, that this density is not the density of understanding. Okay. So as a third density, body, mind, spirit complex is, we actually don't have the ability to perceive the entire cosmology of uh, the creation of the one that we are. Even if, if and if you, as a mind body speed complex, with a lot of attention on awareness itself, even if you're able to go beyond and transcend completely the veil, the veil, you still won't be able to understand alone the entirety of creation. Because uh, in this third density, that signal doesn't come through. That's why it's such a blessing to all human beings of this simulation to have a precise material as the low one that can point us to that which we cannot understand. It really resonates with me that similar to Bentinho and yourself with the law of one, and with Bentinho with, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Nisargatha Maharaj and Siddhar Meshwar Maharaj. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, some quotes here and there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that there's a great similarity in that regard with the direct path pointings, what, what they've been able to directly yeah. point. And Ramana Maharshi has also done a really good job Yeah. So in a sense, channeled material is great on the yeah. metaphysical roadmap. And sort of the, the direct experience of entheogens or the mystic traditions or aphorisms are also really good pointings and to leverage those in the hollowing, cleaning out the pipes to be a pure channel for the one infinite creator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, amazing. And uh, adding and sharing more regarding what you said right now, in order to balance the view that I kind of gave to David Hawkins. One of the quotes that is still on my heart of David Hawkins is, uh, straight and narrow is the path 
waste no time. Yeah, exactly. And I love it. And uh, why he says that? Because uh, you actually are here to realize the ultimate. You are here to realize the one. You are here to realize source. The path to it is straight. So the waste no time. <laughs> Dedicate your life to it. It doesn't have to look like anything. It's about your intention. I'd like to bring us back to what we were saying at the beginning and weave us up there where coming from the I am is coming from the seventh density. It's coming from God. So it's coming from where there's no free will anymore. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Your infinite possibilities collapse to only the highest. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> It is liberating to be free from uh, even your calling, being free from your vision also. Having no playground anymore. So, yeah. That seven density seems to be really correlated with uh, your crown chakra, your seventh chakra, yeah. that is actually the gateway back to source. The very stillness itself will guide most harmonically in the creationary ascent of this simulation. You said that it will guide in the center, didn't get the word. Will guide most harmonically uh -huh. in the unfolding of the creationary simulated ascent. Mm. So get out of your own way. Mm. Yeah. But nobody wants to die before they die. Yeah. That's always the big joke. Is that you have to die before you die. Yeah. One question that is coming up is, what is that I can give up right now? <laughs> what uh, strategy can I give up right now? What uh, thought forms can I give up right now? Can I even give up uh, the obsession to give up things? Mm. What is the answer to your own question? There is a, now a kind of a momentum that has been accumulated through time. So I'm gravi gravitating more and more into, yes, I can, I'm ready. I can do this right now. And then of course, there, is a, there are distortions that are not allowing the complete dissolution of all the simulation that I'm creating for myself. Yeah. And I think there is the beauty in accepting at the same time, the fact that you probably need to accept the lesson that you're creating for yourself, the struggles. Exactly.
we are here to learn from all of this. I like uh, the whole uh, word that you can discover by going uh, into the low O1 point info and typing the word uh, catalyst. Yeah, such a good one. So how many things you're gonna learn there about the nature of That's right. catalyst? That's right. It's a very important word in science as well. Biology, mm. chemistry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So physics, cause and effect. Mm. 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 You set up your own school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So accept yourself, which is the second, know yourself, accept yourself, become the creator. The second is accept yourself. So accept your school. And I would say know yourself is my answer to your question, which is what can you give up? Well, when you know yourself at the most intimate, deep level, you become the most subtle monitor of yourself. Mm. And when you become the most subtle monitor of yourself, then you can give up all of the lower trajectories because you will actually see those algorithms arise and you'll tell them, I see you now for what you are. Yeah. You have, you have no power over me. Yeah, like the mantra, Oponopono, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. I used that for a little bit, uh, then I realized that uh, there was still uh, the, the ego, the persona, resting the mantra, so I had to let go of that even. But it's great if you feel like it's uh, relevant for you to say the four words, or even true, I love you, thank you, to each catalyst, to each experience, to each emotion, I love you, thank you, and transmuting that energy into more of that which you truly are. I would say that that's probably the most important school, lesson, class, part of the pedagogy. Is when you come and incarnate that you wanna get really good as soon as possible at deciphering between when you're coming from distortions versus when you're coming from source I am. Yeah, that one thing will change uh, yeah. a lot uh, in our it's, experience. It's probably the most, what is more than that? Name exactly. one thing, well, name one thing that's more than the deciphering between source I am versus distortions. Yeah, it's all there is, right? Yeah. And we will stop needing uh, the different uh, catalyst to remind ourselves of doing that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, stop needing catalysts. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, Perfect. There are distorted possibilities where uh, a lot of catalysts are going to be there. And as a, and something that I really like, love about this Ho'oponopono again, there is the concept of uh, taking 100% responsibility. Yeah. So if something happened, instead of uh, blaming and projecting, what uh, they're suggesting is to ask the question, what there is in me that is creating this experience? Exactly, why am I creating this experience for myself? Yeah. Mm, mm. What do I have to learn? Mm. Mm. That's the shift from 
again, as we talk about source IM versus distortions, and I like this visualization, it's really simple. It's like the onion layer is the distortion mm -hmm. and the source I am is the radical alignment. It's that the onion layer, that's the distortion is victim consciousness. When the mind body spirit complex takes no responsibility. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. the, the source I am alignment is the full 100% responsibility perpetual yeah. it's the creator consciousness this is yeah. victim consciousness this is creator consciousness yeah man i was a fucking victim for the longest fucking time bro so long so long and i'm sure you were too yeah 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 yeah. That and, uh, one shift. Yeah. Discovers the, uh, the symbols of life. Still uh, different areas in life in which we still feel uh, like victims. Maybe. And uh, right now there is a. Uh, mm, right now there is a collective catalyst that we are all experiencing. The collective catalyst that we are all experiencing is in the form of uh, this word that I don't know if I can say it in the channel, but uh, we are all limited in our uh, expression. We are in a lockdown. Mm -hmm. So what is that we have to learn collectively in order to transcend the need of having this experience? And uh, how easy it is right now to fall again into the victim and saying, it's all the government's fault. It's all their fault. I didn't do nothing. I was not there in that lab. Why should I take responsibility for this? Why should you? <laughs> It depends if you want to see everything as you or not. Really, it boils down to that. When you look at Kevin, do you see a separate entity? I'm getting to a place where I don't. I just see Kevin as my body. I see the whole universe as my body. And so if you, once you get to that point, when you look at the planet, you no longer see a, you no longer see the United States national propaganda between the polarized left and right as something to victimize yourself to, but you recognize that you are literally the creator of both of those propaganda arms as an asleepening mechanism, purposely, purposely. Use the purposeful creation of a veil, the one intelligence being able to veil itself from itself so that it can go through a process of awakening and remembering its true nature by piercing out of the labyrinth that it created for its own endarkenment. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kevin, I gotta say, bro, this has been one of my favorite interviews in a while. Seriously, bro, it's been one of my favorite conversations in a while. You're one of my new best friends in the No Limit Society. I love you, it, bro. Appreciate I love you. it. We're going to do these more often. You just, <laughs> you, you know, you know, and you're really clear 
and you teach me a lot and I love you and I'm pumped. Thank you Atlas for uh, organizing this space for us being here, sharing, uh, learning each other from each other at so many levels, giving to each other the space to share and explore the different possibilities that are available here. What's coming through right now is that uh, this month I had uh, two really powerful conversations and uh, we are coming to the same point uh, as right now. And it seems kind of weird, it seems kind of out there, but what we asked to ourselves was, and was serious, can we take 100% responsibility to change, to harmonize the planet, the world? Can, can we do that? Is it possible? Can I, can you change in the world, really? Mm. Mm. <laughs> you are the very entirety of the creation undergoing the process of piercing through the veil of its own creation to learn how to love itself through all of its individuated expressions and experiences and catalysts and interactions. You are the entirety of it. You are just intoxicated by the contracted identity of being a finite separate person. It's all it is. It's one game of identity. That's all it is. As is said in the law of one, there is no lack. There is no disharmony. It is all about identity. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. is about identity. You're stuck identifying yourself as a person rather than identifying yourself as one step up is the very I am the formless being awareness that is eternal and impersonal, that is God. And one step past that is the very inexhaustible source of creativity, the very one infinite creator. So you've completely purposefully brainwashed yourself into being a person through the intoxicative illusion of Maya, Lakshmi, with little carrots dangling you around. And all you got to do is expand yourself to be the entire universe and then to dissolve yourself to be the very nothingness of the inexhaustible source. And in doing so, you recognize your truest nature, which is beyond coming and going, beyond birth and death beyond the endless infinite creations and immersing yourself in them. It's cool to recognize your truest nature as deep sleep. It is cool to know that. But what do you do after knowing that? You bodhisattva the shit out of the creation that you're in. You atlas the shit out of the creation that you're in. So enjoy being in perpetual service to others because that's the name of this game and realign yourself like a hyper vigilant analyst of your every frame of movie away from your distortions and towards your source i amness mm, 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 mm. yeah so i really love uh, your style of pointing because uh what seems relevant for you is the- uh, You're creating the space for it, by the way. Just yeah. saying, you're creating the space for it. We are all creating the space, the space for it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Please. Because uh, for you, what's relevant is uh, people actually experiencing the truth. Yeah. And what is actually the highest level of truth? Yes. Is it the news? <laughs> the simulation? <laughs> or is it- uh, yeah. 
this space in which Atlas is pointing uh, constantly with uh, absolute devotion to the truth uh, that we all uh, share, that we all uh, are. Is it the truth a uh, conspiracy theory or is uh, something that goes beyond all theories? <laughs> I would say this would be a good time to explore something with Kevin. So take on the identity of getting 100% out of your own way. Mm. Get 100% as what was formerly Alan and what is now Atlas. So there's been an upgrade in identity, an upgrade in union with the nature of reality. Get even Atlas, the one that has united more with the nature of reality out of the way and make it a hollow bamboo, a clean pipe and practice speaking as source, as I am. I am that which is communicating about my own creation helping my own creation recognize what it is doing. It is here to play. It is here to explore. It is here to learn about itself through veiling itself and piercing through that veil in an endless amount of ways to undergo all different types of catalysts and experiences and shedding away distortions towards uniting with me perpetually, endlessly across all possible creations. This is one of my most beloved creations. Treat this creation like it is your creation. Treat this creation like it is your beloved creation, your beloved playground, your beloved exploration of your own love light. See through all of the individuated costumes as an illusion of separation, beautifully individuated fireworks. Yet see beyond that to the one body that I am. And abide more and more as that to dissolve your distortions and to dissolve the suffering and the malevolence and the anxiety and the negative emotions that are trying to guide you away from your distortions and back to the source I am-ness. That is all. I would say that that process is the best process that I've ever learned how to do. And it has been catalyzed by V. So V, I would say, is the most clear channel of Source I Am right now. He gets out of the way and just is that hollow bamboo clean pipe. And I, I just, it's just out of taste and out of <clears throat> resonance that that's how the Atlas soul feels attunement. And so he's been a major catalyst for me there. And I would say that you do a really good job as well. And I'd be curious how, when you practice getting out of your way repeatedly, mm. what would happen? 
what happens while I do that, how the, the process, how the process looks like. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And if you would even feel comfortable doing an exploration of that right yeah. now. Okay. Like a guided meditation? Like Basic, a short guided meditation? Yeah, basically coming from the hollow bamboo of yeah. source I am. Yeah. So we can explore for this uh, starting uh, directly from uh, the end. Starting directly from uh, the gateway to source, which uh, is uh, symbolized in the crown chakra, in the seventh chakra. Here in the top of your head, you don't want to be focused on the top of your head. You just want to realize uh, that this uh, is the gateway to source. From here, spontaneously, the energy of source flows down to the third eye. Here, you want to allow any and all distortions present in this uh, energy center to be empty. Allow any and all distortions present in the symbol that we call the third eye to dissolve more and more into the love and light of source. As the third eye become more aware of itself, the energy of source flows down to the trough chakra. In the trough chakra, what you're realizing that this is the energy center where infinite expression is expressed in every moment. If this infinite expression is not expressed in this moment, let go of any and all judgments and simply dissolve all distortions into the empty space. As the twelfth chakra becomes more and more empty, more can be expressed. As the energy of the crown chakra of the source flows down the fourth chakra, the heart chakra, becomes aware of itself. Here you may be aware of any of those sensations. And without identifying with any sensation, you want to dissolve all blocks to the infinite love that wants to radiate from the energy center of your heart into, em into emptiness. As a the heart chakra becomes more and more empty, more and more love can be expressed through your unique body, mind, spirit complex. As more and more distortion get dissolved into this pure I am, the energy of source spontaneously flows down with no intention, it flows down spontaneously to the third chakra, to the third energy center. Here, you want to dissolve all identities associated with the human identity. You want to recognize yourself as that uh, space of stillness, as that uh, pure awareness, free from attributes. You want to realize that uh, you're not the body, you're not the mind, you are the space in which all of this is happening. As uh, the third energy center becomes more aware of what is, uh, the energy of source flows down to the second energy center.
ear all uh, heavy emotions, fears, angriness can be spontaneously dissolved into the love and light of the one infinite. As uh, more space is uh, revealed, the energy of source can flow down to the root chakra. The energy of source here has completed its own journey of exploration. Here you are a wall, all seven chakras into one, into the source that you are. Yeah, because your calling is people experiencing truth, so you have to reach them, right? We have to reach people through the symbols yes. of the simulation. Exactly. That's how we learn too, through the symbols of the simulation. Exactly. That's right. And the symbols of the simulation follow a power law where there's only a very select few tail end symbols that have the greatest attractor capacity for catalyzing the most awakening. And yeah. so an adept's responsibility is to parse through the civilizational catalog of symbols for those that awaken fastest. Yeah. And these, uh, I think that can bring us to a really interesting point. Huh? Uh, as an example, from what I can remember, there has always been uh, this desire to find that one thing. It's something that I shared with you the last time. And this desire to find this one thing is what attracts you basically to these uh, refined teachings that you're sharing right now, that you're sharing right now. Because otherwise there are so many quote unquote distractions in the spiritual world, in the spiritual market. But uh, why are you here listening about the direct path? Isn't it boring? There is no magic here. There is nothing fancy. It's just Atlas pointing you back to the truth. <laughs> and Kevin, yeah, and all our guests that are high level too. Yeah. That's why. That's why we got attracted to the symbols that were most directly pointing. And that's why we now take what we've synthesized and distilled and are working on simplifying it to even explain like I'm five and delivering that to those that are seeking. Yeah, move yourself away from the bag of mixed frequencies. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like we had so many profound bits. So many good ones. Coming from source is coming from I am the blueprint activation that comes with stillness. all of the cool stuff we talked about with the law of one, we'll put the link in the bio below law of one dot info. We'll put that below for you guys. Abiding as the source I am versus the distortions and stop needing catalysts. What are the top symbols to rocket you to source? I am fastest. There was a lot of other really good points. Those were just some from the notes. And we'll do another powwow soon. And there's so much to still talk about with infinite possibilities, people manifesting their visions, self-realization, continued explorations of the law of one. So good. Hmm. Do you feel satisfied to wrap? Totally. Totally. Cool. It's complete. Cool. Perfect.
Perfect. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for coming on the program. I cannot say how much I'm grateful for this, really. <laughs> Indescribable gratitude yeah. on my end as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the start of a beautiful soul attunement. Pumped. Pumped. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Also, we would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. If the video brought you value, give it a like, helps the algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't to the channel already and share the video with people that you feel like this would resonate with. And do check out the law of one, the links in the bio below. If that is calling, get out of your own way, get your conditioning out of the way. Abide as the source I amness and maximize our potential here in this creation. Mm. That's all. Infinite adoration. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.